the cost outline as follows introduction concept of forensic accounting and forensic accountants. Then we look at the special areas of forensic accounting. We look at the forensic accounting process. We look at evidence in forensic accounting. Then conclusion. We cannot uh, discuss forensic accounting without going back a little to what accounting is all about. As we know, accounting has come a long way and often adapted to changes in its environment. Right from the early stage of bookkeeping, we know that accounting involves cost accounting, management accounting, auditing, taxation, and recently forensic accounting, which is our main interest of discussion for today. Due to changes in business practice and technology, it has impacted on the development of accounting profession. The needs for accuracy and accountability in business performance reporting to our uh, business owners, the government and other stakeholders. This has led us to the development of auditing. But we discovered that auditing is not giving us the right results needed as a result of what? As a result of uh, the unique cases of frauds in both public and private sector of the economy. As you know, modern frauds and financial crimes have taken a sophisticated dimension. With ever increasing cases of fraud in both the corporate and the public sector, sorry, the public sector and corporate and public sectors. Accounting profession is rising to the challenge of curtailing the menace of financial fraud. This has led to the emergence and popularity of forensic accounting, whose initial purpose was to provide forensic evidence in the court against perpetrator, perpetrators of financial frauds. Forensic accounting, as we know, it has to do with investigation, proper investigation, because it's a case that we have to present in the courts, and we must have an evidence to prove it in the courts. The field of forensic accounting and investigation is no doubt a popular area of concern of professional accountants, as a professional accountant must have a knowledge of forensic accounting. Because as you are sleeping, others are there keeping into your organizational accounts or individual accounts. They are not sleeping. They are working 24 hours on how to divert your fund, your personal account, to their own use. You just wake up and discover that you have debit alerts. Without you, without being withdrawing anything, before you rush to the bank, they must have they, they have run away. So, it is a multidisciplinary area requiring the knowledge of accounting, law, investigative skills, psychology, communication skills, and computer forensic to mention a few. Just as they are developing software to move people's money from their accounts without their consent, then as an accountant, you must also have a, you must have a software, a software that that would prevent all this fraud and financial crime. From the foregoing, forensic accounting is a very broad area. Therefore, the purpose of this paper is to discuss the basic area of concern in forensic accounting investigation. What is forensic accounting? It is a scientific accounting method of uncovering, analyzing, resolving, and preventing fraud. White collar crime. White collar crime matters in a manner that produces admissible evidence, which is capable of proving or disapproving facts in issues stated in the court of law. You, you have to be 
intelligent enough. You have to get your facts. And you have to what? Make a thorough investigation. Either fiscal facts or testimony. You can also get your facts from what? From camera. We are advanced. The common pen can serve as your evidence for you to prove the case in the court. That's why at times you see that the offenders will be taken to court and at the, end, at the end of the day, they are free because you don't have enough evidence to prove it. So we must have the most dead evidence to be able to prove it in the court of law. We can also see the definition of forensic accounting as the action of identifying. You have to identify, that you have to study the background, recording, settling, extracting, sorting, reporting, and verifying past financial data or other accounting activities for settling current or prospective legal disputes or using such past financial data for projecting future financial data to settle legal disputes. As we can see, forensic accounting has to do with legal part. Then we have to what? We have to have all the necessary skills to be able to what? To be able to achieve our aim. You must have the law, uh, the, the knowledge of law, planning and preparation. You must have the knowledge of litigation, mediation, arbitration, and the rest for us to be able to prove our point in the court of law. If not, the criminals will go free if you don't have evidence to prove them. Forensic accounting integrates an understanding of accounting principles with investigative techniques to determine whether the action behind financial records and statements are suspicious. Forensic accounting provides an accounting analysis suitable to be used in legal proceedings. Forensic accountants are trained to look beyond the numbers and deals with the business reality of a situation. As a forensic accountant, you don't only deal with numbers. You deal with what? The reality of the situation. Just as I said, you must develop a software that will enable, that will enable you to what? To get the corporates to get the uh, financial criminals in your organization. Forensic accounting analyze, interpret, and summarize complex financial and business matters. They may be employed by insurance companies, banks, police forces, government agencies, or public accounting firms. Today, if you go to some organization, they have a department for forensic purpose, for forensic investigation purpose. Their work is to what? Is to identify or detect the, 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 the modern fraud and financial crimes in an organization. Forensic accountant compile financial evidence, just as I said, develop computer application to manage information collected and communicate the findings in the form of report or presentation. Along with testifying in court, a forensic accountant may be asked to prepare visual aid to support trial evidence. You'll be asked to present your visual aid, your, your physical evidence, for you to be able to work to win the case. For business investigation, forensic accounting entails the use of tracing funds. Asset identification and asset recovery and due diligence reviews. It's the work of forensic accountant to trace funds, to recover funds, both within and across borders. Based on the tips given to you. Forensic accountant may seek out additional training in alternative dispute resolution due to the high level of involvement in legal issues and familiarity with judicial outcome.
types of forensic accounting. We have investigative accounting, we have forensic investigation, we have forensic transaction, we have forensic auditing, we have digital forensic, then we have fraud investigation. These are the types of forensic, forensic accounting. Objectives of forensic accounting. The first one we use for forensic to use the forensic accountant conclusion to facilitate statements, claim, or jury to restore the downgraded public confidence, to avoid fraud and theft, to create a positive work environment. Importance of forensic accounting. The first one is complex litigation. Forensic accountants can give a helping hand by defining complicated financial issues and relaying them in a way that both attorneys and their clients understand better. Government investigation. Forensic accountants' investigative ability can be put to good use, not only in standards in disputes, but also in larger government investigation. Just as we have the uh, anti-crime agencies, they have their own forest, forensic units that helps governments to, what, to solve civil disputes. Minimizes, number three, minimizes loss, losses. The primary benefit of studying forensic accounting is how it can help minimize and prevent unnecessary loss. Day in, day out, we are losing money. Day in, day out, we are losing our assets. We are losing our resources hands of keeping unproductive citizens, then we have to what? We have to make sure that we minimize it. If you cannot do away with it at all, at least we should minimize it to the barest minimum level. Prevention and risk management. Corporate entities and government agencies are increasing turning to forensic accounting experts. For assistance with preventive measures, mayor designed to keep fraud and associated expenses of the investigation process to a minimum. Lastly, reduce exploitation risk by proactively patching any obvious gaps. In current financial operational standard, the forensic accountant can ensure that the risk of future exploitation is significantly reduced. Difference between auditing fraud examination and forensic accounting. Let's look at the difference between auditing and forensic accounting. Auditing is a macro system, while forensic accounting is a micro system. The auditor analyzes the financial statement prepared by the management and gives an opinion based on documents which are given to them. That's the work of an auditor. He prepared Financial statement by the manager, uh, given by the analyzed financial statement prepared by the manager and give his own opinion based on the documents which are given to them. They don't go beyond the documents submitted to them. On the other hand, forensic accounting, they are listening through regular issues and uncover for even where there is no sign of fraud or immaterial evidence. These are the features that can help us to differentiate audit, fraud, examination, forensic accounting. We look at it. In the future, we have time perspective, we have primary focus, we have investigation scope, main work products, main responsibility, then guidelines, the purpose of report, and professional and professional stance. In audit, the time perspective is historical. And the same thing with fraud examination, while in forensic accounting is future and historical. Primary focus is periodic, time to time. Fraud examination is reactive, proactive, and ongoing in forensic accounting. Investigation scope is narrow in audit, is narrow in fraud examination, while it's broad ranging. Main work product is audit opinion in audit, while in fraud examination is fraud case report. In forensic accounting, it's forensic audit reports. While the main responsibility is company and public in audits, while in fraud examination is defrauded party, while the forensic accounting has to do with concerned principal or third 
that guidelines are rule-based in audit, principle-based under audit rule, it is rule-based in fraud examination, then we have principle-based in forensic accounting. Purpose of report, ensure gap is followed, identify perpetrator of fraud, then fraud risk assessment and strategic service, why professional stance is non-technical, that's non-adversarial, adversarial and adversarial and non-adversarial. Let's look at the concept. Let's look at the, who is, sorry, who is forensic accountant? A forensic accountant draws on various resources to obtain relevant financial evidence and to interpret and present this evidence in a manner that will assist both parties. The skills required by forensic accountants, they are as follows. Good analytical skills, creative thinking skills, knowledge of the legal environment, problem solving competence, investigative flexibility, oral and written communication ability, then practical business experience. These are the skills required by a forensic accountant. Application of forensic accounting by forensic accountants. Fraud and white collar crime investigation. Prepare of expert reports, reviews, and evidence. Insolvency and liquidation support investigation. Fraud and fraud tracing. Civil and criminal action regarding fraud and financial irregularities. Breach of contract, breach of warranty, particularly on company acquisitions. Liquidation support. Special and confidential investigation, financial surveillance, background checks. Knowledge of forensic accountant, fundamental knowledge. These are the knowledge that are required by a forensic accountant. Bankruptcy and reorganization, computer forensic analysis, economic damage calculation, family law, business valuation, financial statement misrepresentation. Special areas of forensic investigation. We have money laundry. What is money laundry? Money laundry means washing dirty money so that it appears clean. We see where people turn dirty money into a clean money to the extent we celebrate them. We recognize them in the society. We give them titles with their what? With their dirty money. Money laundry is categorized into the following stages. We have placement, then we have layering. This is the first stage in which, in the washing circle, money laundry is a cash intensive business generating vast amount of cash from illegal activities. For example, street dealing of drugs where payment takes the form of cash in small denominations. The money are placed into financial statement, sorry, into financial system or retail economy, or are smuggled out of the country. You see, you see people transacting with small amounts of the business they are running does not or is not it does not require large amounts of money. But you see them accumulating huge amounts of wealth, building mansions with just a small shop in the town or in the market. You'll be wondering, is this this business that is fetching this money without knowing that they are engaged into what? Into money laundering. Or someone will tell you that it's into business that you don't know the business is into. He's doing business, the business in his bedroom with a small computer. He will tell you that it's into business, but you don't know the actual. If you press pressurizing, you cannot tell the type of business it's into. Maybe it's a gate in uh, what you call uh, transfer or so, or uh, bunkering. But it's only a small shop in the town, just to serve as what? Well, as a cover. Then we have layering. While layering, there is the first, this is the first attempt to. There is the first attempt at concealment or disguise of the sources of the ownership of the funds.
by creating complex layers of financial transactions designed to disguise the audit trail and provide anonymity. Uh, anony anonymity. The purpose of LED is to disassociate the illegal monies from the source of the crime by purposely creating a complex web of financial transactions aimed at concealing any audit trail as well as the source and ownership of the fund. At times, people accumulate wealth and use third party or another person's name. Not using their own personal name. They use other people's. Or they use other people's company. Sorry. Or they have what they, what, what they call frontier. Whereby other people they will be siphoning the fund and giving to their frontier to be running the business for them. In order to cover up. That's what it means by layering. Then we have stages of money laundering. We have integration, justification. The goal in this stage is to create an apparent legal origin of the criminal proceeds. This can be done by doing business with yourself. That's falsifying sources of income, capital gain, or loans. You are the owner of the business and you are the customer of the business. Disguise the ownership of assets by using either your children's name, family, uh, brother's name, wife's name, uh, friend's name, and so on and so forth. You are disguising the ownership of the asset. Using the criminal proceeds in transaction with third parties. Then secondly, we have integration investment. The goal in this stage is to use criminal proceeds for personal benefits. That's cash, electronic money, and cryptocurrency can be used for safekeeping, consumption, and investing. Then asset tracing and recovery. Asset tracing and recovery is the process through which a stolen or disputed asset are traced for the purpose of reclaiming it by the rightful owner. Assets can be traced at both local and across boundaries. It can be traced by the government, corporate organizations, and individuals. It is also seen as the process of conducting financial investigation to determine the rightful owner of assets and examine and examine revenue generated by criminal activities by following its trails. Purpose of asset tracing. Asset tracing for investigation. You trace asset for investigation. It has to do with identifying asset for recovery, identifying location of evidence, identifying other criminal actors, identifying witness and identifying the new leads for investigation. That's the first purpose. We trace assets not to investigate. Then asset tracing for prosecution. We trace assets not to prosecute the offenders. Then asset tracing for, for confiscation. We trace assets not to confiscate them and bring them back to the rightful owners. Sources of information for asset tracing. These are the sources through which you can gather information now to trace assets either locally or across boundaries. We have criminal complaints and proceedings, financial intelligence units, civil or administrative proceedings, spontaneous disclosure. We have auditors, we have whistleblowers, we have media and civil society reports. Assets and income declaration by public officials will have intelligence services. Proactive investi we have proactive investigation. Let's look at the forensic investigation process. Whether investi the investigation centered around financial crime, burglary, or even murder, each investigation must pass through the same general stages. All cases go, go from initial to planning to execution to prosecution and finally to reflection. 
In some cases, in some cases the stages overlap. In others, they are abbreviated. However, in every case, each stage plays a key role in how well or poorly the outcome matches the expectation. These are the stages. We have initiation of case. We have case evaluation. We have solvability factors. We have goal setting and planning. We have investigation. When we talk of initiation, investigation of financial can be divided into two general categories, such as active and proactive. Traditionally, active investigation occurs as a result of victim or citizen initiated action. Maybe someone has fallen as a victim, then in the case of narrating the incident to you, then you take a reactive investigation process. On the other hand, we have proactive investigation occur as the result of investigator-initiated action. Then the second stage is evaluation. In financial crime cases, the active investigation often results from report by investors, insiders, or auditors who have discovered an imbalance in the accounts. Often, these reports are sketchy at best and contain a mixture of facts, speculation, and hyperbole. Therefore, this stage requires that the fraud investigators sort through the superfluous information and extract the essential element of the allegation. We have solvability factors. Solvability factors are those characteristics of an incident that help to predict how successful an investigation will be. Unfortunately, not all cases are solvable, whether in the private or public sector. It is necessary to help identify those unsolved cases as soon as possible, not, not to waste our time and waste what, to, and not to waste resources and energy. After the unsolved cases have been identified, they can be discarded, allowing more time for investigating cases with high probability of solution. We should spend much of our time on the cases that are solvable, goal setting and planning. The investigator's task is result-oriented. To be able to have a successful investigation, it requires goal setting and good planning. Without which, even a good investigator might not be able to unravel in a case. You have to plan. You have to set your goals. You must know what you want to achieve in the investigation, in what you are investigating. Financial crime investigation often involve large volume of information that require thorough analysis with a good plan. It then becomes very difficult to effectively carry out the investigation. You must plan, you must set in your goals, you must gather your facts. You must gather all the necessary information that will help you to defend your case in the court of law. Investigation. After setting out the plan, the next phase is the investigation proper. At this level, witnesses are identified. Documents are collected. You identify your witnesses, you collect your documents, and then assemble them and analyze them in, as what into exhibits. Regardless of how well the planning stage is undertaken, the investigation will be a constant stage of flux. Silverstone and et al. 2007 suggested several ways through which investigation produce good results. These are, you must have a background, just as I said earlier. The case must have a background. You must understand, have a good understanding of the case. You must carry out investigative due diligence. Then you must have intelligence gathering. Then you must have your evidence in forensic investigation. Then the evidence in forensic investigation are as follows. The success of every investigative process is having an appropriate evidence to present in the court. This makes it important that appropriate steps be taken in the collection and preservation of evidence. 
regardless of the nature or extent of the financial crime, the outcome will be determined by what will take place during the crucial stage. Forensic accountant must have a comprehensive knowledge of evidence gathering techniques along with the confidence to put them into practice. The form of evidence we have, we must have a real evidence, we must, we must have a demonstrative and testimonial evidence. These are the three types of evidence required. Let's look at the testimonial evidence. This refers to the oral statement made by witnesses under oath. In general, there are two types of testimonial witness, and they are lay witness and expert witness. A lay witness is a non-expert witness who must testify from personal knowledge about a matter at issue. While an expert is a person who, by reason of education, training, skill, or experience, is qualified to render an opinion or otherwise testify in areas relevant to the resolution of legal disputes. Then the real evidence. This type of evidence describes physical objects that play a part in the issue being litigated. The term includes both documentary evidence such as council checks, invoice, invoices, ledgers, and letters, as well as other types of physical evidence. Therefore, a typewriter or printer in a case involving personal documents is clearly a real evidence. As it is a tape recording, since member of the court can hear the sound at first hand. We have demonstrative evidence. This is a tangible item that illustrates some material proposition. For example, a map, chart, or summary. This is different from real evidence because it was not part of the underlying event. It was created specifically for the trial. Its purpose is to provide a visual aid for the jury. Nonetheless, the demonstrative evidence is evidence and can be considered by the jury in reaching the verdict. Evidence that we procedures. These are the procedures in which you can gather the evidence. Confirmation, observation, fiscal examination, the performance and additional procedures, inquiry compliance, and documentation. Sources of evidence in forensic investigation. Evidence that we gather from both public and private sources. Public information shall be accessed on the internet using search engines and social networking sites, including archive information. And from subscription website or database, media source libraries and some government agencies. Government agencies can be very useful source of information. The government agencies likely to have relevant information with respect to asset tracing are financial intelligence units. Immigration and Border Crossing Authority, Customs, Tax Authorities, Auditing Agencies, Real Property and Vehicle Registries, Civil Record Repositories, Court Record Repositories. These are the sources of uh, these are the sources of evidence under government in forensic investigation. In conclusion. Forensic accounting is increasing to become a major force in the investigation of financial fraud. Though professional accountants are favorably placed in the investigation of financial fraud, there is need for a more detailed training in the area of forensic investigation by professional accountants to meet up with the challenge of most sophisticated financial fraud. The recent global COVID-19 pandemic exposed many firms to digital financial frauds. The country is also faced with challenges of money laundering, and how to recover stolen funds. This area requires serious input of forensic accountants in the investigation process. Thus, professional accountants are expected to equip them themselves in readiness for the battle ahead. Thank you very much. Please, let's celebrate. Dr. Omar Farouk Abdullahi, please. A warm round of applause for him once again. At this point in time,
haven't listened to this very important and highly seasoned paper, we would be inviting the Chairman of MCPD Committee, Chief Peter Ayawo, FCNA, to give us an analysis of this paper. You're welcome, sir. Adieu. Hello. Please a warm round of applause for the Chairman of MCPD Committee. Good morning, everyone. Please, can we just give a round of applause to him? Like I said yesterday, accounting is now treating to another different side. We are going basically into computerization. Auditors, people that are auditors are here. You know what you do in your normal daily job. But now we are talking about forensic investigation. In fact, as to speak, forensic Investigation is courses. They are taking the courses now in universities. And the universities are making it a course, a regular course for them. So what I keep on advising is this. Open your bag. Look at yeah, our course, our, 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 our book. Go through that thing. You will see and you have to you get a lot of knowledge from this forensic investigation teaching. Because we are going into forensic now. As a matter of fact, if you are not the job and you are not having a part of forensic with you, you are not making any headway. Are you, are you getting what I mean? Yes. And we've been advised, you know that Annan have a body, a forensic, uh, for forensic uh, body now. If you have the time, go into deep forensic investigation courses. I'm a forensic accountant as well. You can qualify. A lot of things happen in forensic now. As an accountant and as a forensic expert, with body language, you will catch the, 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 the truth. <laughs> what do I say? With body language of the person, you see it. And you know that fraud, in fact, you cannot eliminate fraud. Yes or no? We cannot eliminate fraud. But we can minimize. Am I communicating? We can minimize fraud. But you cannot eliminate fraud. But you must be an expert. Auditing has passed our normal auditing. Our normal going to uh, looking at their vouchers, looking at this, looking at the payment vouchers. No. You look at the increase of that. What constitutes that voucher? And that what constitutes that voucher is what we talk about forensic. And when you are into that particular forensic investigation, you will know that you must you must be very, very clear about your report. You don't just bring a report. Because ordinarily, like if you ask the lecturer, forensic ends up now in court. That's not what I mean by court. Because when we're doing forensic, it might end up in uh, legal uh, matters. So ordinarily, you don't begin to come and bring on papers and say this and this and that. No. We must adhere to the teaching. So please, please, even if I stay, I keep on summarizing this paper. The bottom line is go back to your bag, do an hour in that course, and you get it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please, uh, let, let's, uh, we're going to have some questions and answer. Hold on. <laughs> Are you the chairman of uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> the chairman of uh, the <laughs> We're gonna have some questions and answer right now. Let's let's we have we have ample time. We have about ten minutes more. Can I get a reasonable question? Four questions. Two, you know, this yesterday they didn't pick up the talk about gender representatives. Gender, are you here? Yeah. Two female, two male, one. Let's get them fine. Come, come out here, please. Please, please. Any sir, come, please. Where's the other mic? Okay, good. Please, hold on. There are many two, please. Any female? What's that? No, don't take light. So, any female anywhere? 
Okay. If you, if you want to ask questions, come out. Come, please, come inside. No other question. Okay, please, please. No other question again. My name is Sani Said Ma. Membership number is 23127. I really appreciate the presentation and the very, very nice presentation. But uh, I have questions. Uh, you said that you, you discussed so many things in forensic investigation, forensic accounting, and forensic auditing and what have But you didn't mention the tools. How to ask the tools? What are the tools of forensic investigator use or forensic accountant use to generate information or to gather information in order to analyze the panel reporting? Thank you, sir. I think uh, I have mentioned that when we talk of accounting, we talk of values, that is figures. But for forensic accounting, it goes beyond the figures. So I just want. Okay, we have two questions there. Any further question from the audience, please? Okay, we have two questions. First is on tools of forensic accounting, and the second is on how forensic accounting function beyond figures. Dr. Umar Farouksen. Uh, I think I made, maybe it came late when I measured it. I said, the work of uh, an accountant or forensic accountant is beyond numbers. It has to do with reality. I mentioned that. I think so. Okay, good. Then uh, the tools used. I think you made mention of tools. Okay. I said we have a, a financial intelligence unit with where you can get your information from. Then uh, civil or administrative proceedings. Then you can also get your information from auditors. They can serve as also your tools of gathering information. Then we have whistle blowers. You can also, yes, I have mentioned uh, media and civil reports. And even individual can supply with information. The only thing you need to you, uh, know is that the information must be what? Must be genuine. It must be accurate for you to be able to present it in the court of law. Thank you. Are you convinced? Please, a very warm round of applause for Dr. Omar Farouk Abdurai. At this point in time, on this very momentous occasion, I am so I have some very salient announcements to make. We are online on various social media channels, and that is to tell you how Anan has extended and expanded our tentacles all over the globe. On Facebook, you can connect with us on Association of National Accountants of Nigeria with the Anan logo to distinguish us, the Anan new logo. We have a social media presence on Instagram at Anan Nigeria. We are also on YouTube on at Anan Nigeria. You can connect with our videos, pictures, news stories, and other updates on Anan. So you get trending, you get updated, and you get informed. At this juncture, on this occasion, permit me to invite Stop. the president of NACA to give us an awareness talk for this occasion. Please, the president of NACA, kindly step forward for the awareness talk, please.
Okay, we have uh, the members of the Nigerian College of Accountancy Alumni Association, and they will be giving us some sensitization on some very salient information. Please, Alaja Bibo. Good morning, my professional colleagues. Warm greetings from the Nigerian College of Accountancy Alumni Association. We welcome you all to the fifth session of the MCVD program holding here in Kaduna. We have a brief presentation to make about the Nigerian College of Accountancy Alumni Association and on activities. So just very brief, please pay attention to this slide presentation. But before the presentation, I would like to introduce some of the ESCO members of the Alumni Association that are here with me. Hmm? To begin with myself, I am Alaja Adibu Tijani Mohammed, FCNA. I am the National Chairman of the Nigerian College of Accountancy Alumni Association. Good morning, professional colleagues. My name is Superintendent Truth Commander Ngozi Chukujeko, FCNA. That's right. I am the Vice Chairman, Alumni Association. My branch is FCT Abuja Branch. Thank you. Good morning all. My name is Sadiq Awolo Uma. I'm from Kano State Branch. I'm National Auditor. Good morning all my professional colleagues. My name is Yakubi Isapam, working with Nigerian College of Accountancy, JOS, uh, FCLA. Uh, I'm the PRO National Alumni Association. Good morning once again. My name is Abakar Sadiq Mohammed. I'm from the branch in Kaduna State here, and I'll be doing the presentation. Uh, the professor, sir, doctor, other members of the high table, permit me to stay on the existing protocol. Distinguished professional colleagues, a very warm good morning from the alumni of Nigerian College of Accountancy, Kwali, near Jos, in Plateau State. My task is very simple and here to create an awareness on the existence of this great association, as well as protect the fact that uh, you are supposed to register fully as an active member of the alumni if you are from the Nigerian College of Accountancy in Plateau States. As you can see on the slide, the Nigerian College of Accountancy Alumni Association came into being with the establishment of the college via an Anan Act, which means the association is as old as the college itself. It came via an act, therefore it has a legal backing constitutionally. So it's not just a mere association uh, which is not registered. The Nigerian College of Accountancy is a postgraduate Next slide. The motto of the association shall be advancing the status of the Nigerian College of Accountancy, which means we are to promote all the good academic and professional conduct of this great institution. And the logo of the association is the same as that of the College of Nigerian Accountants. The Secretariat of the Alumni Association is located at the Nigerian College of Accountancy, NCE, in Kual, near Jos, Plateau State, Nigeria. That is where the national uh, headquarters is. And we have various executive members of the association which include the national chairman, the national deputy chairman, the six national vice chairmen, who shall also be the zonal chairman according to geopolitical zones of the country. You know we have six geopolitical zones in Nigeria and each zone has a national vice chairman represented in this uh, expo. Then there will be the secretary general, the assistant secretary general and the treasurer. Other members or executive office holders of, of this alumni include the financial secretary, the public relations officer, which is the PRO, the auditor, 
and then the ex official member who shall be the immediate past national chairman of the alumni. Membership. Membership of the alumni is open to persons who graduated from the Nigerian College of Accountancy. So if you are a graduate of Nigerian College of Accountancy, you are automatically a member if you register and must have obtained the postgraduate professional diploma of the college with studentship number, which means you must be legally a graduate of that college with the college number. Aims and the objectives of the Alumni Association include supporting the course of the Nigerian College of Accountancy in assisting to actualize the vision and mission of the Nigerian College of Accountancy. One of the aims also includes providing direct assistance, advancement and support for the development of the college. The alumni intend to also promote, enhance and protect the image of the college and the honor itself. It will also provide scholarships, prizes and awards in accountancy and funding of research work in this field. It also provides forum for social interaction, just like this one, exchanging of ideas, experience, etc., etc., among the alumni members. Part of the aim is also to organize workshops, lectures, symposia, conferences, and other professional endeavors toward the development and advancement of the science of accountants. It also provides welfare, support, and assistance to members of the alumni in such areas as job placement, accountant in training program, IT skill, career counseling, membership of ANAD, among other things. It also plays a leading role in the welfare of all alumni members, which means it enhances it, uh, its membership welfare. It also creates credible alumni database to ensure continuous and positive contact with the college, the Nigerian College of Accountants. How does the alumni generate its funding? It has some sources. One of it is through registration fee by members, which is fixed at a meager amount of only 5,000 Naira only. What is 5,000 to an accountant? <laughs> it also generates its fund from the annual subscription, which is placed at 1,000 Naira and, and other sources include. Annually, this 1,000 Naira is an annual subscription. You will only pay it after 12 months or 360 days. Then there will be levies which are imposed on members when they need. For payment of registration fees, annual subscription and donation, the followings are bank details. This is the bank that alumni operates. Nigerian College of Accountancy Alumni Association, which is the name of the account, and the account number is 2012762552 and the bank is First Bank of Nigeria PLC. I hope you must have copied this one so that uh, huh? I'll take it again. The bank and the bank is First Bank of Nigeria PLC. This is the account for donations and subscription to alumni. Projects donated to the college. The Alumni Association has donated to the college, which is the Nigerian Accountancy, include place outpost located at the college premises to boost and enhance security. Then there is a basketball court for people like me who are very tall. Furthermore, the Alumni Association have been assisting the college in carrying its corporate social responsibilities to the host community. And the association also intends to build a recreational center in the college when funds become available. This is one of the essence of copying that account number for your donation and subscription. Thank you. Next. In conclusion, the Alumni Association of the College 
felicitate with all new and all graduates of the college and also invite you into the fold of the Alumni Association. We count on your support by settling your obligations and making generous and kind donations, both in cash and in kind. Can you please put your hands together for the alumni? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Wonderful presentation. Is there, my professional colleagues, any questions concerning the Nigerian College of Accountancy Alumni Association? Or any contribution or any advice or suggestion? Thank you, sir. My question is, after making the payment, what next? Oh. Yes, after we make this payment, what is the next procedure? Is it just making the payment and that's all? Thank you for that question. Like you see in this slide, those funds to support the college and build so many things there. And we normally have our AGM. When we call for AGM, if you come up, you see your income and the, the financial statement you see there. Everything about us is transparent. And you remember, those bills make you the part of us. Because already, I don't know whether anybody here is not part of us. Because I know many of us pass out from the college. If you want to take the random sampling, you know that most, most of us are members. So the money is for the work, the college, the support of the college and everything. Thank you very much, my NCA. We are not really asking question and answer. You, we don't have question and answer in this session. Just register, I must say remember. Register, follow up what they do online. They have a team, as you said. Come for the meeting. Then, like they all said again, you need to go to college and see what I have done there. So it's part of what. Thank you so much. Nigerian College of Accountancy Alumni Association. Good morning to you all. Once again, distinguished professional colleagues, guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my esteemed pleasure and honor to inform you that in the course of our discussions, we were joined by very eminent personalities of the association members of the Governing Council are here present here with us. Permit me to introduce to you first the first Vice President of Anan, Dr. James Ikirari Neminebo, FCNA. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> Treasurer of the Association, Dr. Ibrahim Babajide Awe Agboluga, FCNA. You're welcome, sir. Member of the Governing Council, Mr. Ibrahim Marin Makut, FCNA, you're welcome, sir. At this juncture, permit me to invite. to ask. And uh, if you know we're looking for the handshake, it's very important. So please, I will start from uh, Group A. Before then, I want to actually welcome our Vice President, one, Dr. Jesimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimim
Professional colleagues, our work this morning is very simple. It's just to bring the recap of what was presented by Professor Debari yesterday on digital accounting. The essence of this paper is to provoke you, reawaken you from your sleep, and yeah. know that obtaining this certificate alone is not a yardstick of becoming a 21st century accountant. Like rightly captured by Professor Debari yesterday, 30 years ago, the biggest device being used by an accountant is the calculator. But today, all of us will agree, calculator is the smallest device you even need in your office because technology has taken over. Therefore, you are welcome to the world of digital accounting. We said digital accounting is the formation, representation, and transmission of financial data in an electronic format. Basically, from this definition, you understand that as an accountant, without the knowledge of a computer, you cannot do anything in the field of accounting these days. This does not in any way mean that technology or robot has taken over your responsibility. It is just a challenge for you to be friendly, be conversant with the latest trend, and update yourself to represent a 21st century accountant. As rightly mentioned, there are challenges this trend is coming with. One of the challenges is the artificial intelligence, is also the cybercrime activities, which has bedeviled a lot of activities that has to do with account data. Therefore, as a 21st century auditor or an accountant, you need to be conversant with how all these things work and do not look at them as a threat, but rather look at them as a trend that has come to challenge you to upskill your own skill, to also upgrade your learning standard to meet the challenges of the 21st century. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to artificial intelligence, we understand that automation has taken over most of the many works we used to do in our office. One machine will do the work of 500 people. But that shouldn't scare you because you still have a role to play. That machine can only work when you give it what you give. Therefore, you are needed, you need to make yourself very conversant and also understand how the machine works and also define your own responsibility. You cannot do all these things if you don't have the knowledge. The presentation yesterday was centered on encouraging us to be very conversant with 21st century devices. That is computer. You cannot be an accountant if you don't have the knowledge of computer. In the of a cyber crime, you should understand that you have the right to generate data, transmit and also store them. Those data you are generating shouldn't just be the one of your own organization or the one of your own office. It is your responsibility as a leader in the financial field to also protect the data of your own clients. How do you do this if you don't know how hackers work, how they act, what you need to do on devices? Knowledge of computer is very important. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to leave you with this quote as rightly captured by Professor Debar yesterday. He said, 21st century illustrators are not those who 
who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn, remain and unlearn. From group A, we are adding that a 21st century illiterate is not someone who cannot read nor write, learn, relearn and relearn. But somebody, an accountant who cannot operate computer is also equivalent to an illiterate in the 21st century. Thank you. Nice one. Thank you. So we'll be going to the group B presentation now. Next. Good morning, the members and my professional colleagues. I am Bartete Sulema from Karaba. And my name is Kondugon Timothy Shiaku from Plateau State, the Secretary of the So we are here to present uh, sustainable development goals and reporting. And I have uh, a few details that I can say about it here, which uh, is, can be displayed. But before, I, the introduction in today's business world, there is a growing number of companies that voluntarily adopt, implement a broad range of sustainability practices. A response to emerging challenges and stakeholders' expectations across the environmental, social, and governance domains. In doing so, they try to integrate sustainability in an organizational context is the principles of enhancing the societal, environmental, and economic system within which a business operates. This the concept of three ways forward for organizations striving for sustainability. This is reflected also by Colbert and Courage 2007 who stated, stated that sustainability implies a simultaneous highlight that these policies are aimed of developing an underlying culture of sustainability through policies highlighting the importance of the environment. So all this is, is about the sustainable development goals and what are the sustainable this is a business model that create values for consistency with long term preservation and enhancement of financial environment and so social capital organization. Sustainability report is all is a way of finding source and report appropriate channels so that it can be able to meet the needs of present individuals while taking performance for the needs. In 1987, the World Commission on Environmental and Development, a common feature defines sustainability and development which meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. There are four aspects of sustainability which need to be recognized and analyzed, namely social influence, environmental impact, organizational culture, and finance. There is a pillars of sustainability. In 2005, the World Summit on Sustainability Development identifies three core areas that contribute to the philosophy and social science of sustainability development, which are economic development, social development, and environmental protection. And furthermore, evolution sustainability, which all are Part of it, if you can go, there is no time for that. And the Rio conference held in Brazil in 1992 was regarded at the time as the greatest implementation of sustainable development at the global level. According to the Perry 2005, the implementation of a code and series of economy. So, in that, there is some primary goals of sustainability development. These ideas are people. Planning, prosperity, peace, partnership, and in conclusion, there is some alignment, strategy, compliance, so on and so forth. In summary, there is where accountants can further align and make God bless. Thank you very much.
Go see, you can take your presentation now. My name is Ajibola Sayi Demitope from Kogi State. The chairman of the syndicate Group C. Yes. The president of Anand members of the executive council, fellow professional colleagues, my name is Issa Alaji CNA, membership number 19458 of National State, Kepi Brown. Thank you. My professional colleagues, we are here today to have on the lecture that was delivered yesterday on integrity reporting and value measurement. You can agree with me that this is the break from the norm, and you can also agree with me that major at larger extent of the people, especially the new inductee, have had of have not had of integrated reporting before. And this is to encourage us all to ensure that we, on annual basis, endeavor to, um, to be in this program. Because at the end of the day, we are going to let one thing or two. We are going to have a recap on the integrated reporting and the measure and value measure. Integrated reporting. Integrated reporting ensure a approach toward writing, providing quality information to providers of capital. Can you believe that before what we have is when we are presenting the financial statements, we only have all the components of financial statements, statement of um, statement of performance and the rest. Not 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 time ago they introduced what we call environmental uh, the um, environmental sustainability. This will ensure that we um, we attach to our financial statement the environmental um, aspect of this and where the where the organization reporting all factors, all organization resources ranging from the capitals that are geared toward the product goods and services are to be included in the integrated report. Ranging from financial capital, we have financial capital, we have manufacturing capital, we have intellectual capital, we have human capital, we have uh, we have social and relationship capital, and finally we have natural capital. All these are to be embedded in integrated reporting, so to ensure that those people that are involved in the value creation are included in the report. Greater thinking. Dr. Benga, Dr. Benga largely defined integrated thinking as active consideration by an, by an organization of the relationship between its various operating and functional units and the capital that the organization uses. So in this case now, the integrated thinking will give back to integrated report. All various, all various concepts of organization are uh, to be combined in the production of integrated report. Now, but then, uh, by February 2020, it increased to about 350 cases. That means it was three times the cases that had occurred earlier. Now, one of the major cases that occurred also during that time was a case of um, a rail company. Somebody almost from that rail company. It is also reported that 47% of the um, employed population, of the active population there, who were working from home, became victims of um, a form of cyber attack that is called phishing. What I mean by phishing is that uh, it sends you a mail and a request for your information. Maybe that it will be your login details to a specific pay payment platform. Thank you so much, Group B. The next is Group A, please. I greet you all. I greet you too. I'm Victoria S. Vizo, representing Group E. Membership 27513. Here are the Group E. Are we here? Say aye. 
stand there, stand there. Our topic is sustainability, accounting, and investors' confidence. Next slide. What is sustainability? It is an act of maintaining and being consistent of something. Sustainability accounting, therefore, is the consistent disclosure of social, environmental, and governance activities that give true picture of an organization. Next slide. The emergence of sustainability accounting is as a result of financial crisis, such as global economic depression and the recent COVID-19. All these have impacted on financial activities, which in turn has influenced the expected outcome of the respective financial reports. This calls for the need for competent professionals with high level of skills to be deployed in the preparation of financial reports for the consumption of relevant stakeholders. Next slide. Therefore, these reports have to be accurate, reliable, and consistent in order to erase the distorted general impression by investors towards the report of businesses. What are the relevance and benefits of sustainability reports? It provides extra details on the performance of organization, which permit informed decision, arouses the interest of users, especially investors, enhances a high level of transparency and dialogue, brings about trust and reputation to the brand or product, enables comparability and badge marketing, gives broader vision and strategy on sustainability. Next slide. What are the activities associated with sustainability accounting? We have social activities, environmental activities, and governance activities. Next slide. Facts about sustainability accounting. It is a non-financial reporting. It is also an integral of corporate accounting. References. Accountability and good governance in public sector. Page 101 to page 131 by Lajorin Banga. An effect of COVID-19 on sustainability accounting by TFTO. Thank you. Thank you, Group A. At this point in time, we await the collation and final announcement of the results. Panel of Justice, please, can you get the first? First. Please, can you clap for them? Can you clap for them? We don't need to come out here and get us. So let's just be fast because we don't have, we're we are running out of time. Please, um, can I start from the fifth person, the fifth group? The group C, 64.5. No, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> let's start from the fifth group. Let's start from the fifth group. And group B is uh, Group B. Group B, where is Group B? Yeah, 51. Just 64. Then Group C, 64.5. Organization Group C. Please start for them. Then Group D, Cape Todd, 67. Group D, Cape Second, 82%. Then group A, Kemp Press. Uh, can you just turn this way? I want to call on our Vice President Wong to come and uh, give you a handshake and hand over the gifts from the President. Sir, please, can you address them? The Treasurer of Annan, other members of the High Table. Professional colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Before I make my presentation, let's look at the syndicate group in this. Many persons feel that the syndicate group in MCPD is a waste of time. Professional colleagues, anything beautiful is not what it is. And this is why I have in every opportunity I tell my members. We want to make a niche of ourselves in Nigeria, in Africa, and in the world.
purpose. So that anywhere we go, by your speaking, people know this person is an accountant. He must be an unarmed accountant. We want to make you very regretful. And this is why we are at every MCPD we introduce the syndicate group. The advantages of the syndicate group. Sometimes you come and you've been sponsored by your office. And as it's important when you go back, your boss might ask you, what did you learn while you were at the MCPD? Oftentimes, most people may forget. But when you were involved in the syndicate group, ladies and gentlemen, I bet you, you will at least remember something to tell your boss. Knowledge is not just residual value. Knowledge is power that promotes you to the next level. You remember the things you have learned here so that you can be at the next stage of the knowledge. gives great powers. Your participation, even though you have been scored by your registration, your participation attracts great power. And your participation is scored by the submission made after presentation. Where I don't know about your channel, whether you told them the right place of each group and present. And if that is not you get our in accordance with your participation. Oftentimes, accountants think they are not for public speaking. And so, often we have certain facts. Syndicate group is to embrace that aspect of state rights. Except those of us who are involved in our study schools to debate and drama, we expose ourselves, but we execute stage fights. Syndicate group is to make you overcome that phenomenon. So many persons, sometimes even to the people who call themselves learned colleagues, they have minorities. Did you understand? Did you hear me? Such a lot of things you exhibit in public speaking. We welcome the arrival of. At this point in time, we're welcoming. We welcome two questions from members of the audience. Kindly step forward if you have any inquiry, comments, or observation about the association. While you state your name, your membership number, and your state plan, please. They're not watching like that, they're not in this problem. I'm not telling you what to do. They're not telling you what to do. They're not the guardian like that. Please, where are they asking questions? Hey, hey. Okay. What uh, protocol do they I, I stand on the existing uh, protocol. I'm going to follow last from here, but that's the form of our It's membership number 45424. Please, I want to ask. Yes, sir. Why is it that Anna does not accredit schools, I mean, our institutions, like the way I can do? I work in a federal botanic as a lecturer. And regularly, I can come around for accreditation. Any school that fails to do that, their students will not be allowed to sit for the next uh, ICANN examination or to participate in their forthcoming uh, programs. Why is Anna not doing that? Thank you. Next question, please. Good morning, my fellow professional colleagues. Good morning. Uh, standing on existing protocol, I'm a matter of charity from Anna Brassett. Please, I have one question, sir. My membership number 39323. 
So I faced a challenge and I think I thought I have to uh, come and ask that question. I don't know why our PGD is not recognized as an educational PGD. I, I got PGD and I was very happy. So I wanted to use it for my MSc. Unfortunately, I went to the department, National University precisely. The HOD told me that it's not an academic PGD. For that, they cannot give it MSc. So I want to plead with the management, is there a way they can step it up? Even if it means we doing projects on it, because what she said was that, we didn't do, we are not doing projects on our PGD. So for that, it's not an academic PGD. So I'm pleading with the management, there's a way they can at least make it an academic PGD because we'll use it to go far. And I love that PGD. Thank you very much, sir. Next question. Good morning, Mr. President. Hello, professional colleagues. So my question is, uh, we heard that our college in Jos, the National College of Accountancy, has been converted into a university. So what, uh, what do we intend to achieve by this? Or am I being... Oh, did I not get it right, sir? My name is Ibrahim Adewan Zalla. Membership number 169. 11169. Thank you, sir. The president would now respond to the questions. Well, thank you very much for some of these. Uh, uh, well, thank you very much for uh, these uh, questions. First, uh, First one, why does Annan not join in the accreditation uh, to universities of polytechnics? And uh, the, the man who was asking the question said, if you, if you fail accreditation, you will not be allowed to take uh, the next uh, pro account professional examination. You can see why they need accreditation. They tie their examinations to the accreditation in the institutions. Let me give you a little bit, a little bit of background. When we were undergraduates in the 1970s, I can never went on accreditation to any institution because they did not believe that professional courses like accounting should be read in universities. So it was not. There was no accreditation at all. There was no visitation. Throughout my years as an undergraduate, I interacted 